This fountain is an attractive addition to our school campus, but almost hidden in the bushes, you'll find that it's a memorial to former principal Raymond Brokamp and his wife Pauline. Raymond Brokamp served as principal of Walnut Hills from 1967 to 1976 and later assistant superintendent and interim superintendent of CPS. Although Raymond retired from education in 1987, his son Jeff Brokamp followed in his footsteps and became the principal of Walnut Hills in 2007. In 2017, he retired, passing the torch to our current principal, John Chambers. Raymond Brokamp passed away April 2020 at the age of 91. This fountain was constructed in his honor summer of 2021. You may recognize the name Rick Steiner from walking past the Black Box Theater, but you may also know the legacy of his younger brother, Corky, just as well. While Rick went on to become a famous Broadway producer, Corky took on the family business, Kenner Toys. Co-founded by their father in 1946, Kenner Toys is known for producing famous toy brands such as Easy Bake Oven, Star Wars, Jurassic Park, DC Comics superheroes, and even more. For his 80th birthday, Corky's ex-wife and stepsons commissioned this Yoda statue, hand-painted with images of classic Kenner toys, and with the help of the Alumni Foundation, it was installed in the Triangle Courtyard earlier this summer. This Statue of Liberty is the most recent addition to the Triangle Courtyard. It was installed earlier this school year to commemorate the life of former teacher Beth Ormsby, who passed away in January 2020 at the age of 40 after battling cancer. She taught American History and Walnut Social Studies Department for 17 years, and the hand-painted images on the statue represent her love of art and history that she instilled in her students every day. Although current students are too young to have experienced Ormsby's teaching, her former colleagues and friends remember the effect that she had on the, those who stepped into her classroom. Her room was probably one of the most welcoming rooms that you could hope to have in a high school, especially here at Walnut Hills. Her students loved going to her class. She was strict and kind and wonderful and brilliant and her students, the level of respect her students had for her and her knowledge of American history was, it, it didn't know any bounds. Just truly an amazing educational experience for her kids. It wasn't just students who learned from Ormsby. Her teaching and style left a lasting imprint on the hearts and classrooms of her former colleagues. She had, an, uh, and I've never met anybody who did this better. Um, we have a teacher here, Miss Nolan, who makes me think a lot of her this way. and. Uh, we have some younger teachers in our department who make me think of her a lot this way. Um, but she had an amazing ability to combine rigor with fun. Uh, people have this idea that something, if it's gonna be rigorous, it can't be silly or fun or, or creative. And she had this great ability with lesson planning um, to do things that were fun, creative, but also tested critical thinking. And, and you know, her kids always did a fantastic job, but they also, I think, had a blast. Working with the Ormsby family, the Alumni Foundation commissioned this monument to represent her and the values that she instilled in the Walnut community. One of her favorite places was the Natural History, or not the Natural History, the Cincinnati Art Museum, and loved going there. She did love art. She loved all different kinds of art. And the other thing, and I know the real Statue of Liberty does have this, you know, her book in, the, in her arm, but it reminds me of Beth with her with her clipboard because Beth always had her clipboard in her arm and was taking notes and jotting down things and keeping track and had just a ton of information always on her clipboard. So I love seeing that part as well. Um, it's it's an amazing testament to her time here at Walnut, and I am so glad that future students get to enjoy that art for them. Um, and that that is really part of her legacy. She continues here. All of her goodness continues here. Hello, and what is your name? Hi, I'm Ms. Mondini. Hi, I'm Langston McGee, and today we're going to be discussing Walnut Woods. So, how did the woods look before? Hmm, well, it was 10 acres of wall-to-wall -wall honeysuckle. 
And when did the improvement process begin? This was many years of students working hard and so it actually started with a group of students at Walnut who were just sitting around a kitchen table at one of their parents' houses and they were like, that space could be really cool to use for classes, like why is it not a park? And so they decided they were going to start cleaning it up and I found out that they were wanting to do that and I'd been wanting to do that for a long time and so we just kind of teamed up and it started out just little bits at a time, small groups of students going out, pulling out trash, cutting down honeysuckle um, and it grew from there. What was the most difficult part of the process? So I think it's just understanding that when you're trying to make an improvement to a community, you have to be prepared for the fact that there's going to be setbacks, but you have to look at the big picture and if you just keep going steadily by steadily, um, you'll see the improvement that you want. What's the biggest change you've seen? Um, in the woods? Yes. Oh gosh, um, I would say I'm most excited about uh, the trail system. It's fully functional. When you go walking now, you feel like you're in a true park or natural area. Um, we even were able to name the trails. The BioEco Club students voted on trail names. And if you look over there, we have an official Cincinnati Park sign. Um, we didn't used to be a true Cincinnati park. It was land owned by parks, but not designated as a park. They own a lot of land. Um, but because of all the work that Walnut students have put in, in, uh, they decided to make it a true park and so now it's officially Walnut Woods of Evanston we have a sign we have trails and we're hoping to have a grand opening uh, sometime this fall how does it feel to see the transformation um, I would say it feels very satisfying and also hope inspiring um, because it's good to see something that you've worked for come to fruition. And so I get really excited when I hear about classes and teachers going out to the woods and integrating it into their curriculum because that's what the space is for. Uh, not that many schools have like 10 acres of woods like right out their front steps. And so I'm excited that the space, even though we're not like at our end product yet, like we're still working, it's become functional. And so that's been really exciting. What do you hope Walnut Woods becomes? Hmm. Well, I hope a lot of things. I hope it definitely becomes like a fully integrated outdoor classroom. So I, I foresee um, art classes out there doing nature photography. I'm a science teacher. Science classes out there doing ecology. I'll be taking my seventh graders out there soon. Uh, maybe performances. Um, but also as a wildlife area, uh, we're hoping to document uh, the biodiversity um, and the life that this area supports, especially once we've removed the invasive species and kind of planted more native species. So so I'm excited to, I guess, document the positive changes in the area and hopefully share that as a model with other Cincinnati schools um, because there's a lot of schools actually that have little parcels of unforgotten land next to their school where if they became stewards of that, those little pieces of land added up could really make a big difference for conservation in our area. So in the bubble that we were talking about, what do you think is going on? Either A, more like space for school dances, B, um, extra lunch space, or C, tennis courts? Um, I heard extra lunch space, but also tennis courts. I don't know. I think it's just like a bubble over the tennis courts, but will be also used for extra lunch. I think it's going to be lunchroom and tennis. I think it's lunchroom spacing. But I thought it was going to be a library. Mm, probably more lunchroom space. Um, the the bubble that has become affectionately known as um, is an uh, indoor enclosure for the tennis courts. Um, this initial design was to um, provide overflow space for lunch um, during um, the pandemic when it was at its height because we didn't have enough space to space the students out with the six feet with the social distancing. So that um, bubble was uh, created to provide an overflow lunch space. The um, um, expected completion date is early October, and um, s that is, uh, you know, last meeting we had with the construction people, that was still the, um, the target date and time. Hopefully, we don't have to use it for overflow lunch space mm -hmm. because we're, um, that uh, the whole six feet um, um, social distancing issue would be over, which is, would be a um, blessing. Um, but I think it will, you know, add to, I mean, the, um, having the ability to have tennis year round and um, the court will also be um, striped for um, pickleball or, um, you know, because that's become really, really popular. So 
Um, so it will, it will just give us another enhancement here to uh, provide the opportunity for our students.